right, everybody. We're here with Garav, Rachel, Garav's first session of the year. Get warmed up, let everybody funnel in. What's going on, Julia? What else we got? We got Toronto, Canada representation. What? Berlin. Sorry, Joey. It's always been in Seattle. All right. All right, everybody. We'll go ahead and... All right, everybody. Welcome, uh, welcome back, Garav. It's great to great to see you again in 2023, and we got some more stuff lined up for you. Um, love to see that. It, this is I love when we can do this in the morning. We do really get like some very um, international audiences. So we've got Morocco. Welcome, Nula. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, welcome everybody to this session. We'll let more people funnel in as we get going. But first, without further ado, if you have not met. Garav, Garav, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell so we have a lot of new learners this year, so you know, um, let them let them introduce yourself. Know how you got into Salesforce, what you're currently up to, and all that jazz. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. So, hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, challenge. Uh, I've been associated with Clink, Clicked for a while. I think uh, I've done a few of these. I actually remember lost count of how many of uh, these I've done, but. Like I started off in Salesforce in 2007, a long back 16 year journey, or as my wife calls it, got married to Salesforce, spent a lot of time with it. She absolutely hates it, but I'm still doing it, uh, which means I, I really love it a lot. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun journey. Like uh, I am a certified instructor with Salesforce. Um, I became a Salesforce MVP in 2016 and I absolutely love teaching Salesforce, which is the reason I keep coming back, although it's 1030 in the night. Uh, here in India. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this uh, challenge. Like uh, the way these are different is like these are not conventional trainings. And like uh, the best part is like we we get we actually get to hear people from a lot of different countries and a lot of different backgrounds. So really looking forward to today's challenge. Awesome. Uh, and Garab, I'm sure your wife, as you continue to pursue your new, new adventure, will love Salesforce even more. I wish you all the best of luck. I'm here to support you. As I said, therapy sessions, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Um, super happy to have Garab here. Super excited to do this challenge. Everyone, I'm going to kick it over to Rachel to introduce what it is we're going to be doing here. Awesome. So what it is that we're going to be doing here is for the first five minutes, we'll just have a little brief overview give you guys some introduction to goals, rules, principles, and your experience. We'll also give you those scenario details. We'll let Garav give us some tips and tricks on how to actually go through this experience um, and how to, how to approach this challenge so that you can get the most out of it. And then we'll take about 20 minutes where you get to do the challenge. This is very constrained time-wise. So we'll give you some time to work on the task. Try your best to do it with your do it by yourself first, and then if you get stuck, you can come to the group, ask questions, and then uh, for about thirty minutes, we'll have feedback and Q and A. So there will be this whole time where you've got uh, working on the task, and then also an opportunity to listen and ask questions as we go along. So that by the end of that twenty minutes, you've got a deliverable ready to go. And then, of course, core clicked principles. First and foremost, we're all here to learn. We're all here to create. And the best way to do that is to learn from each other, right? Insights and key learnings from this experience will be co-created through discussion and feedback, not a lecture, which that's boring and nobody <laughs> likes a lecture and it's going to be different every time this way. The second thing to note is that this is a safe space. We're not here to get it right on the first time. There's no grades or scores or judging in this experience. So Try new things, volunteer, ask your questions, be willing to do it wrong, and then come back to the drawing table and 
make us make a second draft after the experience. And of course, have fun. Everyone says it, but we really mean it. This is basically an improv session. So make sure that you have fun in this session, in this experience. And of course, don't hesitate to share um, any thoughts that come to mind. All right. All right. Now we introduce the task. So pop in the emoji session section a, um, a little confetti thing if you've already looked at the task and given some time to dig into it. Oh my goodness, yay, so many confettis or cornucopias, whatever those things are. So here is the scenario. You are a Salesforce business analyst working with Slack. Up until this point, Slack has only used Salesforce to track data for the B2C side of their business as that was initially their primary source of revenue. They want to begin using Salesforce to track data for B2B revenue as that is a growing emphasis moving forward. Right. So during the task, you'll be using the information you receive from the interviews with the team at Slack. That's going to be in the app.click.com. If you go into the scenario task, you'll be able to access this link. So during the task, you'll be using that information to develop a business process map showing how data is currently used in Slack and how Salesforce could be used to track the data instead. And then the task, what you're going to be doing today is creating a process map of how systems are currently used to track data as, at Slack. You can make informed assumptions if you're not totally sure or if there's not enough information. If there are gaps in your understanding, we recommend using Lucidchart to build your process map. But if you're familiar with another tool, go ahead and use that. You can choose a map with a very simple bird's eye view of the process, or you can really drill down and go into depth. Whatever's best for you based on your experience with the topic and what you're comfortable with. So you can use these guided questions. Again, you'll find all of these questions in the LMS while building your process map, right? What is the sector? What teams and individuals are involved? How is current Salesforce org designed? What is each part in the org? What are some common tasks currently completed in Salesforce? Where are the delays or bottlenecks or problems in the current org? What documents or tools are used? and what documents or tools are essential to the current use of Salesforce. If we've got time, think about your business process map that you've just built and have a second draft. If you've worked on this before, you might already have that first draft, so use that time to go and create a second version of the business process map, incorporating Salesforce, thinking about how it could be used instead of the previous data systems. Awesome. So uh, Gaurav, have you seen more business process maps through Click stuff or in real life? <laughs> A little bit of both, I would say. Like I've seen plenty of business process maps and, and projects across the last 23 years, but I actually find it very, very gratifying that I've seen tons of these in, in the challenges as well. And that is what I would encourage uh, people here to do as well. Like, please use this time uh, and we will we would love to provide you feedback, constructive feedback, which can actually help improve your business process mapping skill. So, um, Couple of tips from my end, like focus on the personas, um, like what 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 those personas are. If there are any assumptions that you make during your um, business process mapping, do call them out uh, when you present them. Uh, and I think in the previous slide, there was also a document which actually talked about the interview notes. And I can see a lot of you are already on that um, on that Google document. So use that as kind of the source of truth in terms of the information that needs to be fed into your business process map. If you've already put something together, um, like you can always use the time. I think we're giving you 20 minutes. Is that right? Uh, to, to refine it. And then, yeah, I would love to see it. Like no matter like whatever you build, um, like it's it's a start and I would love to love to see it and provide you feedback. So then you can iterate and then improve upon it. I think um, that's, the, that's the overall idea. Awesome. Perfect. So this is a very quick 20 minutes for those of you who have a head start. Great. We'll get you up on stage. And for those of you who are just starting it right now, the timer is going. So we got 20 minutes. Um, for those of you who don't like witty banter or want to shut us up while you're actually doing it, you can just mute us. You can go back to uh, one of the lobbies, come back in 20 minutes. We'll let you share. I know some people sometimes just want to um, work in some solitude. Uh, me, Gaurav, and Rachel, we are going to chat a little bit more around this scenario, around just business process maps in general. Um, I will probably ask a point of question to Gaurav maybe first. Um, 
universal process notation keeps coming up a lot, a lot, a lot um, around like when should you use UPN versus when should you use just like a traditional process map, right? Um, mm -hmm. Any any thoughts from your perspective of, of when it makes sense to use one or the other or how it applies and even like if you're even using UPN? Yeah, these are different schools of thought and there is no like one size fits all or there is no right or wrong approach here. If you're comfortable with UPN, go for it. At the end of the day, like when you are building these out, you need to keep in mind what the client is usually comfortable with. UPN, the advantage is that it's very well, very well adopted, uh, but at the same time, it's complex as well. So again, as long as in a, in a real project scenario, as long as you set expectations with the client that we are we are going to generate it in this particular format, then that should be fine. Uh, for, all for, for today as well, for this particular challenge, we are not really restricting you. If you want to build a UPN, that's fine. If you want to build it in Lucid, that's fine as well. If you want to build it any any other tool, that's that's entirely up to you. What we we'll look at is what you have what you have generated eventually, not not really the the tool that you have chosen. So that's not the focus. What we actually build is the focus. Awesome. Sounds like it was an it depends situation. I would imagine. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So um, I posted in there. If you do have, we've been using elements. Um, he, oh, that's funny. He, I didn't even see your question as we went in there. We've been using elements to build our UPN. When I saw here, it mentioned Lucid charts. That is hilarious. I, I didn't even see your question. I mean, uh, I jumped to it beforehand, but hopefully that answers. Uh, and I think it's, Garab, it's such a good point, right? Like if uh, UPN is, you love UPN, but your clients don't understand it and they can't read it, whoever you're going to deliver to, you shouldn't use it right you need to use something that's 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 valuable to the client and they can understand and another side note on upn it if you're studying for the ba exam definitely you're going to want to know upn so it's worth understanding it at least even if it's not your first go-to for building the process map absolutely great point yes Awesome. And for those of you who are going to, if you've already previously done this and you are going to share your work, oh, sorry, I need to go to the next slide. Um, and I'll go back to the scenario so everybody has this. If you're going to share your work, nice. Akshan, just raise your hand. Go ahead and raise your hand. You can get in the queue. We'll probably let some people on a little early since we started letting people actually go through the experience first. Um, so feel free to raise your hand if you want to jump onto the stage cool cool um so grav if you were doing this in like 20 minutes and all you had were interview notes to do this what would be kind of like the first thing you would do to like try to craft together a, a business process map out of this like what would you be like i right, uh, let me try to get this information and compile this down really quick how would you approach it yeah so as i said like uh, for me like the business process map you basically need to put yourself in the shoes of the personas in in the stakeholders that are represented there um, the pain points are usually in the interview notes, like what is it that they are trying to solve and how do you leverage the capabilities of the platform to solve those. With that in mind, you basically design like this is my this is my input. These are some of the decisions I need to take. So th th those are the typical decision points. And where does like what is the logical end for your for your business process map? Those are the three thing three things like. Where does it start? Like, what is the action that that is kickstarting it? Uh, what are the various decision points based on those decision points? Like your process, business process map either goes in this direction or that direction. And what is the logical end of your business process map? Like, what is the end deliverable out of that business process map? If if you can derive all those three things and link it to the right stakeholder, that is that is usually all that we look for in a business process map and obviously it can be very very simple like you could just draw like a uh, input uh, uh, like a, a some processing happening and then an output but it's a very simplistic level so the more the more detail the more granular you can make it i think the better it is and the more closely it mimics the actual business processes uh, the better it is as well nice awesome love it and again, if anybody does have any questions as you're going through it, we have 15 minutes left. Go ahead and pop them into the Q&A section. Um, this is a great question. As a first timer, welcome. Kimberly, is it okay to be just an observer to get familiar with Clicked? 100%. Absolutely, we certainly encourage it. Uh, if you wanna jump in there and throw together something on a piece of paper, that's awesome. But sit back and relax and we all get to learn from each other here. So, uh, 
it has been one of the challenges i have seen like people even though they have attended a challenge earlier they will come in for the second time for the third time and then they also gain confidence like first time they'll just come and observe and see how others present what does a business process map looks like and it's completely fine like uh, when i did this for the first time i had no idea what what upn was as well so completely fine and i, I think we be at ease and and over a period of time these challenges run fairly frequently so the next time you come in you should absolutely attempt it and and present your business process map as well and the same for sprints as well and jeff you've seen like how many people have repeated those sprints like first time come in for the experience second time go all out and get, then get certified as well so absolutely that is more than welcome yeah for sure and and you raise a good point that every time you come back you keep learning something new you get a little bit more seasoned and comfortable with the platform and building these process maps i wonder if um if garav you could expound on some of the best practices for building these process maps just to you know have a general guideline about what should i even be doing slash what's what's a no no if you will yeah so i think there is a excellent trailhead module which i saw was already linked i think in the scenario so uh, jeff if you could bring that up i think in in the chat and that might be helpful um i think it's in the document or it was there yeah, on the find it. experience yeah it's probably in the scenario yeah yeah so i think one is that like do not do not over complicate the the business process map like i've seen like uh, just the right level of detail if uh, is needed if you try and convey too much through a business process map and it becomes too complex uh, and it shows up like a spaghetti then it doesn't serve the purpose like it is it should be intuitive uh, it should easily clarify like as i said three three key things like a clear entry criteria a clear decision matrix in terms of what 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 decisions are being taken and then a clear uh, clear path towards how when that business process map is ending um usually like people also take like a lot of things like people color code it with different notations you can you can do that as well but as long as it's well organized and it's intuitive and you don't need to explain it like uh, uh, in steve jobs words if you need to explain it it's not simple enough um if you do that and it's self explanatory i think that's the best business map if it's too complicated and like um, people feel intimidated then you've probably done too much awesome awesome and then garab uh, rachel did you have something go for it no i was just saying that's a great answer <laughs> summarizes it well yeah and, and garab it probably depends on stakeholder sometimes too yeah. right like if you have maybe like a, a your your main client on an engagement who is not super technical probably even the simpler the better and then if you have somebody who is a little bit more technical maybe a little bit deeper is that is that kind of a fair thing anything yeah. that you've seen along those lines absolutely so business process maps are typically like one of the artifacts that you will generate as as part of the the discovery there may be others as well like you would also typically like depending on the engagement like you could also put together like a system landscape you could put or also potentially put together like a current status system landscape as well as a like a a future state system landscape so along with business process map along with a system landscape potentially along with a data model there are a number of artifacts which which uh, kind of convey the overall picture of the business problem as well as the solution that you are proposing awesome love this summary rachel we've got a Good question from Aya. Is it okay to add suggestions in the process map that are not required by the client or should we stick to the requirements? Of course, make assumptions, document those assumptions and like as long as you your business process man can justify those assumptions, absolutely go for it. Cool. And then we've got a couple of questions regarding tools, uh BPM, Lucid charts or elements and then a follow up question like what's the difference between UPN and Visio so can you kind of expound on the the tools versus what UPN is yeah so UPN is a process notation uh visio and elements and lucid are tools um so each tool can like you can build UPN notations using a tool or you can build like a, a like a business process bpmn notation which is the business process modeling notation Lucid is general it's one of the industry standards there are others as well there is mural there is muro elements cloud is very very specific to um, very very specific to specific to salesforce but it's a fantastic tool 
Vizio again is uh, generic, uh, so it really depends on what you are comfortable with. A lot of people actually do it in in PowerPoint or Google Google Slides as well, but it really depends. So the advantage of using tools like Lucid Charts, Elements, uh, and Vizio is that you actually get a lot of a uh, lot of pre-built templates. You also get elements. So for example, if I want to represent an entity, I want to represent a stakeholder. I don't need to draw it by hand. I can just drag and drop it into the canvas and then I can use it. So always advantageous to use a tool, no matter which tool you use. Personally, I prefer using Lucid Charts because it's very powerful, has a like lot of templates, has a lot of uh, elements that I can use. And the best part is it actually can integrate with a lot of other tools as well. So with Lucid, you can actually directly hook it up to your Salesforce or to draw a data model, things like that. A lot of advanced functionality, especially around Salesforce. Elements is great as well. So um, those two those two tools I would recommend. Visio is a little bit from the Microsoft side of things, but if you're comfortable doing that, then, then go for it as well. Yeah, and even adding maybe like another layer to the, it depends, it could actually depend on where you work, right, Gaurav, right? Like if you work for an organization that has Microsoft licenses, you may be stuck leveraging you know, either PowerPoint or Visio, as opposed to maybe some of the other tools that might have restrictions. Yeah. Awesome. And and do you have one favorite tool that you use for different things, or do you have more of a comprehensive go-to for anything? So I use Lucid, and along with that, I actually use uh, Salesforce has a framework of its own called uh, Salesforce. Uh, architect diagramming framework. I'll just pop in a link here. It is mostly used for um, like data models, uh, system landscape diagrams, but you can also build uh, business process diagrams based on it. So let me actually see if I can pull up um, a diagram, which is a business process data model from there. I'll just check if I can mm. find some. So but do yeah. you mean they you build the process map in Salesforce? No, no, no. It's a, it's basically it's a set of templates. It has a Lucid template. It has a Google Slide template. That's how it works. Mm, mm. Yeah. But it's all like uh, it's basically a set of recommendations from Salesforce that to standardize your data model, to standardize your business process map, you can use the Salesforce product logos and icons and things like that. So that's why it's advantageous. I'll just drop it in the chat. Right. Awesome. And Beryl has a question. Is there a prerequisite to this training? I feel like I've landed in the middle of a CDE. There's no prerequisite. Most people feel that way in their first training. <laughs> Just keep coming back. You'll get the hang of it. Uh, beautiful. Nice. You got it, Beryl. So we've got about six minutes left on the clock, y'all. Um, we'll probably, we've got a couple people in the queue, um, two people in the queue right now. If anyone else is planning on sharing the work, of course, we always encourage it. That's how we all get to learn together. Go ahead and start raising your hand so we can start building in the queue. Nice, Hema. Um, and then we get to celebrate y'all afterwards. Cool, cool. Sita raising a hand. All right. Nice. Love it. Another good question here in the queue, uh, when we do process business mapping, do we need to add why it's happening on the flow if we're not using UPN? Uh, yeah, I would say it really depends. Again, it depends on the stakeholders you are communicating with. Uh, but like typically like uh, more, is, more is less. Like it, it all depends on what, what sort of stakeholders are you dealing with. If you are dealing with people who are very heavy in terms of operations and they want to understand like like how the how the future state uh, flows would look like then i think it's best to add a lot of detail but it also depends on as i said there are other artifacts as well which you would generate as part of the discovery so it really depends there is there is no there is no right or there is no wrong here but like in general as i said it needs to have a good level of detail like I remember like coming into a discovery session where like I asked somebody to do a business process map. It was one box, input on one side and output on the other side, and it was a black box. So that is something which will definitely not fly. It has to be a little bit more detailed than that. So, yeah. Hmm. And, and do you find that the level of detail varies from industry to industry? Yeah. So typically, like if you talk about financial services, if you talk about like 
process intensive industries like manufacturing then your process maps will also get a little bit more complex for sure awesome. Gaurav, do you have any process map fails with clients where they just didn't like the work uh, several but i think uh, in most cases like i think it was like like uh, stakeholder expectation i think you need to you need to get yeah. it right like you need to understand uh, when you are dealing with certain stakeholders like we some i remember once we we presented and i think the cfo was there and like she, all she cared was numbers but like she was a little bit intimidated like will i need to budget for so many things and we had to actually tell her that no like this is we are just representing uh, the the process and this is actually how the flow will work this does not mean that this costs something else this costs something else i think that was uh, that was something and then we all had a good laugh about it after that but um it's i think mostly been like around like ex as i said stakeholder expectation management in terms of like getting the right level of detail uh, if you do that then i think usually it works out well and we've also seen like another thing that you in some cases you need to do is once you present a, a business process map there will definitely be some feedback from from the stakeholders in some cases it's very very cosmetic or minor in some cases it may be you have understood the process is wrong like you you made certain assumptions and those were wrong so that's again a great way of validating your understanding of the requirements and catching it early in the project life cycle because assume like you you didn't build this you started with development of you start, started with feature development and at the end of uat you realize whatever you have built is not what the client expected so in that sense also it's a very powerful tool to kind of validate your understanding of the requirements and your understanding of the business processes as well awesome yeah i i came up in a, another deloitte experience where i we spent like a week on like a whole tech and business process uh diagram and the client never looked at it <laughs> they just did not care it was gut-wrenching it was gorgeous but it was absolutely gorgeous <laughs> So, uh, so Amit, you've got a question here. Would like to present for those of you who are going to want to present. There is a raise your hand button, I believe, on the bottom of the screen. Rachel, maybe you can help me out. Go ahead and raise your hand. That will get you into the queue. We've got a two-minute warning here uh, for everybody, and then we will get started here momentarily. Cool. Right. Any last words, Garav, before we jump into those presentations? no as i said like the the first time i did a process process map business process map like it was a miserable failure i'm i'm sure all, all of you will do much better than that so there is nothing we like there is there should be no hesitation at all like as i said we provide constructive feedback and you'll see like you'll you'll only get better by presenting you'll only get better by uh, seeing uh, the feedback from others as well and also like uh, as as you practice more and more you'll you'll get better so this is like an open forum at the same time as i said we will provide constructive feedback so this is a good opportunity which you'll probably not get like presenting in front of 100 other people i can provide feedback and jeff and rachel can provide feedback as well so yeah awesome rachel do you remember your first time you had you presented on the other side presented the business process map i do I have a musical theater background. So for me, it was a little bit different. I would just, I really like being on stage, but that being said, I'm sure I'll look back in a couple of years and kind of, you know, uh, good how deal. far we've grown. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we are here. So we're winding down. Everybody go ahead and raise your hand, get in the queue right now. Let's take a look at what it is. So we've got Fanu, Kima, Sita, Amit on deck. Why don't we go ahead and kick this off? And everybody, if you do have questions at any point in time, go ahead and pull in uh, questions because um, we'll spend some time for a reflection and discussion at the end of it. Cool. All right, Rachel, the floor is yours. Fanu. No. You are up. Let's see that process map. Can you see my screen? Yes, Fancha. It's coming up. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good evening, Gaurav. So this is the map I drew for the current state. So the marketing team they captures the lead from the web, and since it's not documented properly. They send the information over to the sales team. 
which again document all the information to the Excel sheets. And they contact leads by cold calling, by calling them or sending them emails. So I have mentioned a pain point here, like Google Sheets, they use Google Sheets and all data is uploaded in Google Sheets. And if the lead is converted, uh, they will go ahead and sign the contract. And if not, it goes back again to the starting process. So once the contract is signed, it's again a pain point saying uh, it's physically signed. It has to be physically signed and there won't be any security. Uh, changes can be made by the client also, which we don't want. Um, and once the contract is approved by the client, we send it over to the information te operations team. All the lead information is sent over to the operations team. Uh, the client is onboarded and there's support provided by phone or email. Well, we can do better in the future process for this one. So that's why I marked it in red. And in the end, the finance team, they manages all the contact and billing and uses an old CRM, which is uh, not like Salesforce, just old CRM for managing the information. And that's how we end it. So this is my current state. Uh, you want to give me feedback on this or should I show the future state as well first? Let's look at future state as well. And then we we'll do a collective feedback. Okay. So starting here, uh, we want them to use the marketing cloud and um, like all the lead information, they can be stored in the marketing cloud. And going forward, if the lead is qualified, uh, we can create a contact on opportunity. And I have a question on this also. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the lead is not qualified, it goes back to the queue again. Like we are not processing it further. So when we're using Salesforce, we're gonna draft contact contract and this will prevent the swivel sharing. We don't want them to go to multiple screens and uh, we will send the contract to the client for approval. If he's happy with the client, uh, if he's happy with the contract, uh, we go forward. Uh, and if it's uh, any modifications is needed, we again go and do all the modifications in the contract. So once the contract is signed, we send the client information to the operations team, which onboard the client and they are provided like 24 by seven support afterwards using the support cloud, like by call or emails. And the finance team, they receive the client data, which we input in the Salesforce. And that's how we end it. So this is my second time presenting. Um, so I don't know how much good it is, but I do wanted to show with the work I did. Absolutely. Yeah. This is fantastic. Right. That was actually going to be my first question. If this is your first attempt, then this is excellent. But even if this is your second attempt, this is seriously impressive. So okay. uh, thank you. Just, yeah, just a few questions here. Mm -hmm. I think overall mm -hmm. it was great, like very well presented. It's very, very clear. You I think you did a really good job. Like a lot of people think it's just either current state or future state, but you drew both. Mm -hmm. um, one thing which is missing is I cannot make mm -hmm. out what the color code coding means. Like there are no legends. Yeah, there. I, I, yeah, I didn't put that. I just put the red ones here for the uh, current state, uh, saying because these were the pain points. Mm -hmm. I have to mention that yes, and it, the white was looking blank, so I just give them some light colors. I mm -hmm. am yet to work on that. I, so you mean to say if I color code something, I should specify on the side mm -hmm. that red mm -hmm. means. That's pain right. points. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's Noted. Right. And then, like a uh, few things, like uh, for example, support cloud. Like it's not a standard terminology. I think you meant here service cloud because case management is, I think, what you are referring to here. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that was that's the one. The cases and all, right? Yeah, that's that's. I think I I was able to figure it out. But other than that, yeah, it looks very impressive. Like very clean and I think I was able to understand most of the things. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no other feedback, I think, apart from the color coding. And uh, yeah, everything else kind of looks good. So well done. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Awesome, Hima. Can't wait to see that one shared on LinkedIn. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do no. that. Hima is up on deck. Fnu, great job. <laughs> shared on LinkedIn. <laughs> All right, Hima, the stage is yours. Yeah, and Finu, I've actually got a question before I even talk. Did you did you do this uh, beforehand, or, or I mean, like how much? Yeah, this, just how long, I. How long did I it take? But did it, was um, it just from yesterday? That's still really no, good no, no, not yesterday, not uh, 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 not okay, yesterday. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Sprint. 
Yeah, yeah. We can. can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I happened to see it in the morning. I dropped my kids and 8.15 or 8.20, I sat for it. And that's when I made it, uh, the current and future state. And also, uh, my name is Akanksha. Uh, FNU Akanksha. stands for first name unknown, which we get on the user, US visa stamp. Since oh, I don't use my last great. name, Thank so you. my name is Akanksha. Okay. Akanksha. Akanksha. Yeah. Great. Now I know Thank it. Thank you, every everyone. Time Thank you, Jeff, forward. Rachel, Gaurav. Thank you. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. Hima, what you got? Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. So, actually, I do have one question for Gaurav before I start. Like, mm -hmm. how much time usually the BS spend on the process mapping, Gaurav? And if it is only the BA that is going to work on it, or like someone else will be working parallelly or helping them? So it could be like whoever is involved in the discovery. Uh, it could be like a solution architect as well. It could be a project manager as well. But it's usually the discovery team which is helping out the BA in building these out. And to your other question, like, again, it depends. Like, if I talk about like a financial services organization where you are implementing something like a financial services cloud, it depends on the number of uh, key processes that, that they have. And as I said, that, that could get really, really complex. So one process itself could take a business analyst about two to three days. And if imagine if there are 10 or 15 different processes like that, then that cycle could be very long as well. But in general, like I would say, like when you are doing discovery, a discovery itself is like, like a three to four week engagement at the most. It may be a little bit more than that if the project is really complex. But in general, like I would, I would assume that your business process maps for a reasonable amount of flows would, would take about one to two weeks, not more than that. Okay. Thank you, Garo. Uh, here is the one that I created like uh, last time for the sprint and it is the same use case. And this is the one I got to do in last 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you mind walking through both of them? Like Yes. Yeah. Here it is like uh, the leads will be coming into Salesforce and the leads are going to be turned into opportunities and the opportunities become contracts. After the user signs the contracts, then they become, they will be like uh, going to the billing team and whatever is after billing, they will go to the revenue. Mm -hmm. And here, it, it like uh, here I had like more time. So like uh, for my understanding, I wrote like uh, there is like one part dot I'm not mm -hmm. sure like uh, like uh, when I kind of like read some articles, it says like uh, for B2B, the most of the lease will be coming from Pardot. Mm -hmm. So there is a small underneath, there is a small uh, other use case, like mm -hmm. other UPN for this. And uh, like uh, we will start from like uh, leads landing in Salesforce mm -hmm. and the sales team will kind of like uh, follow up and they kind of like qualify the leads depending like, uh, okay, this is like a big deal and like uh, like whether it is kind of like qualified or not, like after that, they will go to the, op they will be turned into opportunities. And like if the leads are not qualified, like if they need more time, they will kind of like go back into the pipeline, mm -hmm. depending on the business. If they want to send them back to the pipeline, they will go and they will stay there. And if the leads are qualified, they become opportunities mm -hmm. and the, um, sales team will work with them and the bottoms are the people who are working like the teams the sales team or service team who exactly will be working on that so if the opportunity is one they will go to contracts payments etc and if the opportunity is lost they will be like unsubscribed like they will be lost and they will go back and if they want more time like even after getting the opportunity they were kind of like negotiating or like they just want to wait or like some other reasons they will go back to the pipeline mm -hmm. and here like after contracts and payments they will go to support like uh, how to like uh, maybe if it is like um, fixing something or like uh, how to kind of like tra getting training they go here and then they will be followed with the ser service support team and after that they will kind of like uh, go to the renewals if the contract is like uh, they will kind of like, if it is a subscription one, they will go to the renewals. If it is not, they will go to the revenue and predictions. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, so this is like current state or this is this is future state? Uh, this is the future state actually. Okay. I didn't do for the current state. Okay. No, I think this is this is a good attempt, and I think the other diagram that you showed it's obviously very very. Can you can you yeah go there yeah. yeah. This is obviously very very high level like, uh, and it's not really showing up as a as a business process diagram because as I said, it has to have a, like a clear entry criteria, a clear exit. and then there has to be decision cycle so here i don't really see any decision cycle at all like i don't yeah. know what are what in what cases the opportunity will not go to a contract and so this is like mm -hmm. over like it i think there is obviously a lot of detail that needs to go into it can you go back to the other one yeah here i think it's a lot more detail but i think uh, there are a few things which i think were not in the scenario maybe you have made assumptions around that like for example i don't see anything mentioned about end user training and 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 follow up so is this that something that you assumed like uh yeah actually like if we buy something like uh, we will just like like end user training it can be like maybe i have to put like add a slash to it maybe like installation or something mm -hmm. where like they kind of like uh, after like buying they will go to the support and like they will get like uh, scheduled to kind of like get it fixed mm -hmm. Okay. and like the follow up is like uh, asking like when they are going to come and fix it maybe like mostly it is like a product or like even if it is like a, when we are doing the b2b and it it doesn't have to be like always like it is in the it sector right maybe yeah. it can be like in the hardware part too b2b sure. yeah fair enough i think yeah this is more closer to like uh, what we would expect in a in a in a in a, in a business process map so I think this has the right level of detail. I'll still need to double check like the scenario just to see if everything is mapped like well. But otherwise, yeah, this is this is a good attempt. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, team. And Hema, was that was that your first time, first time using Lucid Chart when you were trying to power uh, yes. through it? Yes. Yes, Jeff. Nice. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Glad you got glad you got to pick up a new tool and went after it. So that's mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you all. Dive in playground. All right, Sita Coons. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Um though I have uh, presented uh, many times many business processes and blueprints, I did not have much time, but I went through the process, uh, went through the scenarios and came up with something um very faster so that uh, you no know, um um that could help with whatever uh, you no know, uh, task has been assigned. for the day or for this uh, business sure. process mapping so the first uh, current state uh, i did not come up with anything with the current state but um, i've been using google charts or google drawing for many of my um, you no know, blueprintings or uh, no um, process mapping so i just thought let me use this one sorry uh, if i've not uh, yet come up with a lucid chart but after the session probably i'll no go into that and create so here i just thought since the actors are very clearly mentioned in the scenarios uh, so i came up with all the actors and what are the clouds which will be used and i did not want to go into another cloud uh, i wanted to restrict to the paradot and uh, no uh, sales cloud um so that's the cloud which i have taken for this uh, current state for this client or for the you no know, when they map into the uh, salesforce so here is the process starts so once the process, pro prospect is you no know, in the paradot uh, no there are multiple ways a prospect can be uh, you no know, um, come into paradot like either through um, you no know, they visit a page or they you have your own website you have a landing page you have a you no know, microsites there are many ways you you can know uh, there are lead scoring and uh, there are uh, no engagement uh, automation where you can automate all your processes of your prospects so that you no know, they get qualified and then they sync up into the sales cloud so once they get synced up into the sales cloud so uh, either through an email or through a contact that gets synced up you you get the leads gets created and also there are opportunities from paradot that can get created directly into sales cloud 
I have not brought in that process into this. I was I re re specifically restricted to the contacts, leads, and leads. So whenever there is the same email address with the same uh, with the contact, then the paradox gets synced and that contact is created into sales cloud and if it is the same email address then the lead gets created and if they, there are no um, email address or a contact then the lead gets created a new lead gets created from the prospect or from the paradox to salesforce so once these all uh, no uh, contact record or the leads gets created then there is an account and contact which is in no, which gets uh, no um, the contact of uh, no um, the account and contact gets created in the sales cloud from this leads. Uh, leads can create accounts and contacts once they get converted, uh, once they get qualified, or once they get converted. And even once they get converted, they can get as a contact account and contact. So once a contact and account has a sales stage or an opportunity, various opportunity stages, and once the opportunity based on once they have closed and won or once the uh, sales executive following this opportunity, once it passes the stage of uh, prospecting to uh, different types of uh, opportunity stages, then it gets closed and won. Then the opportunity product, the product which gets, uh, no, which is uh, part of this, uh, no, for this uh, B two B company, uh, no, uh, with a price book attached to this product, gets the opportunity product will have the opportunity and the related products and the price books. So once this all gets confirmed, then the contract gets signed. So uh, the odd account can also have a. Uh, no, um, quote, uh, yeah, quote. And based on the quote, uh, they can have multiple quotes uh, for an account or for an opportunity. They can have multiple uh, quote. And based on which quote, uh, no, uh, the contract can be signed or can be sent to the client uh, via email. And the scenario says that they are sending through an email. So DocuSign, I thought, could be a good, uh, no, um, um, Sure. Uh, app exchange that could be used embedded into the contract uh, no object and then uh, the customer signs back uh, once the contract uh, once they are fine with the contract and then order gets generated and uh, here is the operation team which handles the uh, customers who are onboarding whenever a customer is uh, generated or, or a client is generated or a client signs the contract they handle the onboarding process and then it goes to the client support where when uh, no there there is a cor corporate email or something which in the sales cloud also you can create cases so if a, the client support team handles the cases so and then the finance team updates based on whatever the order is signed based on the price and uh, no uh, Sita, once the order is comes inside yes Sita, let, let, let's go ahead and pause here garab do you have any feedback on on what's been shown so far so i think this is great and yeah, yeah sorry really well comprehensive but we have also a lot of other people in the queue so i think we'll need to keep it brief sorry, so yeah. i'll just quickly provide feedback of what i really like i think like swim lanes i think that you have done is fantastic like uh, swim lane basically is a way to kind of um, clearly identify who's doing what you have taken an interesting approach on swim lane. Swim lane is generally associated with people or with personas or with stakeholders. You have actually mapped it to various products, which is not usually the way it's done, but it's fine. Like since you are representing future state, it, each swim lane is actually showing what problem a particular product is 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 solving. So that's good. The one issue I see is um, I don't see any decision cycles. Like I don't see if there is a delay in contract yeah. signing then what happens i don't actually see where things are starting i think that's the other thing so um, the entry is not very clear in terms of who's kicking off the business process there is nothing coming from the first swim lane to the second swim lane uh, and then i don't see it's very small so it's very difficult for me to see like some of the elements as well and and the decision elements but other than that like i think the thought process is really good like identify everything into various swim lanes and then, uh, then break it down based on that. So really good attempt in that sense. All right. Nice job, thank Sita. You, thank you for your feedback, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
So Amit, we will have you up on stage next and then um, Beryl. Amit and Beryl, let's go ahead and present with essentialism so that we can wrap up on time, bring that golden question um, for, for Gaurav to answer. Yeah, I'll just share my screen now. All right, so can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah, hi, hi, uh, my greetings to all of you. Uh, this is my very first attempt uh, and I have made this all in like last 15 minutes only. So just let's behave with awesome. me and for my mistakes. All right, so how I have started is, okay, uh, I have started, I have done this uh, Slack B2B team consulting project. Am I, I have done the right process, right? That's right, Pick yes. the right yeah. Okay, so I, it's from the starts, the, all the leads come on the website and all the data is collected up here. Okay, and uh, then uh, all the networking with the leads, all the leads are connected to the phone and email. And if the leads gets converted, then all the emails are sent to the leads with their contracts. And the physical contracts are signed, which are then further saved into manually in their Google Drive. And the same thing, they are using the email and the spreadsheet uh, along with their old uh, this uh, CRM solution. And the same, the sales team is also using this, all the email and spreadsheet and storing in the Google Drive. Uh, there, you'll find some open loops up here, like the finance team is using the managing their contacts and billing and storing it in their old CRM. Uh, but the most one is the lead when they get converted, they're sent to the uh, physical contracts are sent for the signing. And uh, then uh, at the same time, once this process is done, uh, the same emails are sent to the ops team, uh, mentioning them that the new client has been added and the onboarding new uh, of the new client is done. And that's a closed loop again uh, for any feedback and the support loops. So th this is what I was able to just figure out and build up in like 15 minutes. So yeah, would like to know any, any feedbacks about yes. my thinking process at least. Yeah, for 15 minutes, this is a really good attempt. Uh, I think one of the things which I mentioned earlier as well, I think... Uh, very clear i think it gives a good idea of like what what is happening throughout the flow i think the color coding is still uh, legends are missing so it's difficult to identify like what mm -hmm. is representing what although it's like anybody who's experienced will be able to gauge that but always a good idea to represent the legends uh, okay. i don't see enough decision cycles like what happens yeah. if we doesn't convert there is nothing happening there so th that lag is is kind of missing and like some of the edge cases, like I think there was a pain point mentioned. There is a if there is a delay in signing the contract, I think those those nitty gritties mm -hmm. are. But overall, I think it's it's very well uh, very well designed and well presented. But yeah, some some fine tuning okay. required in terms of the yeah. actual process flows. But a really good attempt okay. considering it's done in fifteen minutes. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Definitely great work, super clean. Okay, Beryl. Hi, Rachel. Uh, actually, I do not have a, a presentation to make, uh, but I did have a question when the first presenter was presenting. And since it's my first time to attend this forum, I didn't know uh, where, where or how to ask the questions. But uh, I have okay. loved and I have Everybody gets used to air me too. Yeah, and I yeah, know I can, I can uh, note down my questions on the Q&A section. Thank you. All righty. Yeah. Okay, we will have then Prat Pratiba come up on stage. Super quick presentation, leaving time for feedback and wrap up. What you got? Hi, Jeff. Hi, Gaurav. Hi, Rachel. Um, so like everybody, I also tried to squeeze it in 15, 20 minutes. I supposed to okay. start at 11, but uh, for another sprint, we got stuck with something else. So, and this is my first time at Lucid Chat, and I felt uh, UPN is easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's good to know all the been, tools. So, I'm glad we put you through the pressure cooker. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to learn, Lucid Chat. So, um, it, this is a mix of current as well as the, what could oh, be. But um, we, can't, we cannot see your screen. At the bottom, there's a little square with an arrow in it. Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. Sorry about it. Now, is it good? Yeah. Okay. 
so this is a mix of the red note says that wherever we can uh, use salesforce which they are not using currently but uh, as uh, it starts here the new leads are entering through back to lead which is where they are using salesforce and with the help of marketing and sales team we will check for duplication if leads are already existing then um, means they will we will deduplicate or exit the system if not uh, new leads will be generated and turn into the sales cycle for lead qualification and all if qualified they'll enter the sales cycle if not uh, we can go back to the uh, legal team or they can touch with after few weeks then uh, converted into opportunity context and if deal is lost again we can store it in the salesforce system for future which they are not using as of now if deal is one uh, we'll create code using salesforce which currently the finance team is working through email and calls and all uh, if code is accepted then uh, we can send a welcome mail to the new client uh, again here we can use salesforce very well um, if not exit the system and then uh, we can provide the support and all and later on it can go for renewal and all so i just tried to make it very simple but love your feedback for it no oh, absolutely this is, this is a really good attempt for like 15 20 minutes but like i can see like some some legs are missing like in case it's not accepted you have mm -hmm. a no uh, decision like you have a no leg but it goes nowhere yeah. so i think that we needs fixing you also need to ideally mark it out clearly in terms of if the renewal is done then the business process flow is ending i think there needs to be an end note there as well um, other than that it's mostly clear again as i said like you have some notes in there which i think as i said clearly mark it out on a legend so there is no scope for confusion at all um, yeah otherwise it's it's really good obviously if you had more time you could flesh out more details and cover more edge cases but like this is a really good start so so well done okay uh, a quick question what do we mean by legend here legend is basically what color is representing what and if you have like a box is it representing something how is a stakeholder representing so that oh, that is what okay legend. and for the end notes do we always use these boxes only as start or end or because in upn you have a end uh, like a cross or something you can use so i was not sure Yeah, so similar to start, it's a, it's same same oh. representation as a start node as well. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff, for the question. Awesome, great job, everybody. And I love that we had a couple of people go through the pressure cooker, try to do this in Lucid for the first time. That is most definitely part of this process and why we do things a little bit funky here. Uh, Gaurav, do you want to give us quick closing on thirty seconds of what you saw? Uh, I think we got through most of the questions, but uh, any any final reflections? Yeah, so as you can see, like there is no one size fits all approach to doing this. Somebody did it in UPN, somebody did it in Lucid, somebody tried it in, in 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 another another tool. I think someone did it in Elements as well. So, uh, no one size fits all. It's not a right or wrong. Uh, and having the right level of detail, making sure that whatever you are trying to convey is actually intuitive. That's the most important part. And I think I saw some really good process diagrams today. And for people who have actually done it for the first time or the second time, or people who just did it in 20 minutes, it's it's a really good start. But don't uh, this is not the end. Like just spend a little bit more time on on it. Try and refine it. Look at the scenario again and try and see how you can improve this. And that is how you will actually learn. And when you when you actually get to a project to do this, that's how you will actually uh, improve upon the uh, on the business process skills as well. Awesome, amazing everyone. We posted feedback form in the chat. We always love to make sure that we can feedback so we can get better as well. Um and with that, that is a wrap. Garav, it's great to have you back on the stage. Can't wait to have you in the next sprint which we'll be posting here pretty shortly. Thank you so much for your time, all your wisdom and knowledge, Rachel. Always great to have you joining me on the stage and running the show. Great job. Uh for all of our learners, thanks for everybody who popped up on the stage, shared your work. We all got to learn a ton and per usual We'll see you all at the next one. All right. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. See you guys. Nice job, guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye.